in this section we will talk about returns so far we have seen how to procure services non stock items stock items and all along we have just been receiving goods into our inventory but what if something goes wrong let me give you some examples say you receive 100 pounds of flour or sugar and the vendor sends it to you in 250 kilo bags say one of the bags is torn or the flour has gone bad the sugar is gone bad what do you do you don't use it right what do you do you return it to the vendor now how do you do returns this is just one scenario there are many other scenarios for returns we will see the different scenarios for returns in this section the simplest is called as a return delivery so what is a return delivery let's take the same case coffee gone bad or sugar gone bad and start all the way from the beginning so there is a po right that's for say 100 kilos of coffee and the po is received so goods comes in the 100 kilos comes in and you do an invoice receipt so basically this completes the steps from a p2p perspective and the invoice is paid of course that's a finance step we don't care so the goods is received goods is in the warehouse and then somebody went in and wants to use that 100 kilo coffee or 50 kilo coffee but what they found out is the coffee has gone bad it's gone stale or whatever now we want to return one of the 50 kilo bags what do we do we call the vendor and say hey you know what one of the 50 kilo bags is gone bad we wish to return it typically there is a very long term relationship between suppliers and companies the vendor says no problem the next time the truck comes in send it over and i'll replace it right so the first step that we are going to do is create pogrir and after that we are going to return 50 kilos of coffee right so let's do that all right so we're going to create these three steps number 1 number 2 and number 3 create the purchase order first vendor 4001 material coffee beans quantity 100 right that's it save we've got our po copy it now by this point you should be very well versed with the basics of po grir so that's the reason why i'm not going into the details if you are not well versed then you better go back to the previous chapters all right so go back go to goods moment now we are doing step number 2 here now this step is done we have ordered for 100 kilos of coffee now after some time the goods are coming in and that's what we are going to do now we are going to receive the goods so put the purchase order number that we copied in there enter and how much did we receive we receive 100 kilos we are saying item okay and where did we receive it into our coffee storage location and save okay so the material document is posted so step number 2 is done now we are going to do step number 3 which is receiving the invoice so we have raised the purchase order received the goods and after some time of course we got to pay and to pay we have to receive the invoice 
So the vendor is now going to send the invoice and we're going to receive it into the system. How do you do that? Miro. Miro. Then when did we receive the invoice? This is the invoice date against this purchase order. Hit enter. And we are receiving an invoice for a quantity of 100, right? And what's the amount? $1,000. So we're going to put an amount of $1,000 here. Hit enter and save it. All right. Our invoice is saved. Let's go back to the PO. Hit enter. And see the purchase order history. Now remember, Purchase order history is where you see all the transactions that has happened to that purchase order. Now, what has happened here? We have created a GR, we have created an IR. <clears throat> Let's see if those transactions are tacked on to the purchase order. Purchase order history. And of course, you see the material document, which is the goods receipt and the invoice that we have created. Okay, so far so good, the transaction is complete. Now, remember, the goal of this chapter is to do the return. And how do we do the return? Returns, typically inventory-based returns, are done with reference to the GR. So with reference to the GR, you create a return delivery. And where do you do it? In my goal. So let's do that. So let's copy this material document. Control C. Go back. Go back. Now go to my go. And instead of a goods receipt, we do a return delivery. Right? Now, this is something we are doing for the first time. So, pay attention. All along, we have been doing MyGo for goods receipt only. Right? Now, MyGo is a transaction that we can use to do so many different things. What are those different things? Returns delivery is one of them. So, how do you do a returns delivery? Like I said, with reference to the goods receipt. So we select goods receipt here and we select material document and we paste the material document in here and hit enter. The system automatically pulls the quantity, storage location, plant and all that stuff. So what this means is you have received a quantity of 100, 100 pounds of coffee or kilos of coffee in this goods receipt. Now what do you want to do? How much do you want to return? Well, you could return the entire 100 quantity or in our case, we want to return 50 kilos. Remember, we said there are two 50 kilo bags that were delivered. One of the bag was gone. So we're going to return one of the bags. Right? Click item OK and click save. Now, what does it ask you? It says enter reason for movement. Now, why does it ask you this question? It didn't ask you this question when you're trying to receive the goods. Well, this is a customization behind the scenes. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it when we get to inventory management. But for now, let's just say reason for goods movement. Go there and select a reason why we are returning it. It could be poor quality, but in this case, Basically, it's damaged, right? So I'm going to say damaged and save. Well, that looks pretty intuitive, right? What we are trying to do is give a reason why we are returning the goods. And why we are putting that reason is pretty obvious, right? When we return goods, you obviously put a reason. 
go to amazon you return goods you put a reason there you know the thing is broken or it doesn't fit me and stuff like that all right so go back and this step here is complete and now what's the next step the next step is to do a credit memo right so what's a credit memo it's something similar to an invoice but when we receive the goods we have to pay the vendor that's called an invoice that we receive from the vendor but when we return the goods the vendor is going to give us a credit memo what's a credit memo let me take the amazon example if you buy some goods from amazon you pay amazon right so amazon sends you an invoice you pay amazon well you just pay it right on the website but if you think of a b2b scenario amazon gives you an invoice you pay amazon but what if you return goods to amazon now amazon owes you money right in this case the vendor abc foods 4001 is like amazon and you are returning some of the stuff back to amazon now what happens the vendor owes you money so he gives you what's called as a credit note or credit memo what is a credit memo it says i have to pay you so much earlier an invoice says you have to pay me so much a credit memo is exact opposite of an invoice it says i owe you money right so we need to document the credit memo just like the way we document an invoice and how do you do that same transaction myro and instead of an invoice select credit memo see it's not all that complicated right only these three transactions purchase order myro mygo these are the transaction that we use to create all the p2p steps now what's the amount for the amount the vendor is going to send the credit memo is for 50 pounds right it's not 100 pounds it's 50 pounds and the amount is going to be for 500 right now when you change the quantity to 50 you see that the amount does not change now this is weird right when you change the quantity the corresponding amount should change but it's not changing here well the reason is sap has left that to us so if you want that quantity to change according to the amount or vice versa you can customize it but sap says i'm not going to change it because we don't know what amount the vendor is going to give a credit for sometimes the vendor might take some charges like if you buy something on amazon or best buy and return it there is something called as a restocking fee right so similarly there could be some charges that the vendor could levy so it's not always you know a one to one relationship between quantity and amount but if you really want the amount to change with quantity meaning if you put 50 here this should automatically go down to 500 15 to 10 500 in order for you to see that there is a parameter that you can change it's not a configuration it's a personalization meaning it doesn't apply to the entire organization it applies only to you if you want to have that control you can have it with a parameter what is that parameter do you want to post no go to personalization using transaction s u 3 you could use that or you could use system user profile set data any of these okay and go to parameters and over here put in iv amount adjust and then put an x there and click save Okay. Now go back to Miro.
put your purchase order number in there and the quantity that we are receiving a credit memo for is 50. Now observe the amount column. So I've just entered 50 and hit enter. You see what happened? The amount automatically changed to the corresponding amount for that quantity. 50 multiplied by 10 is 500. If you put 25, it's going to automatically change to 250. Right? So that's that. We're going to change it back to 50. And we are going to receive that for $500. Make the balance as 0. And save it. Right, so we have created this in Miro. So whether it's a goods receipt or a return delivery, you do the transaction in Migo. Whether it's an invoice receipt or credit memo, you do those transactions in Miro. So what have we done now? We have just completed the return of 50 kilos of coffee. And how did we do that? We created a return delivery with respect to PO. This is with respect to material document. This one is with respect to PO. All right. Now let's go back to the PO and see the PO history. So our invoice is complete, our credit memo is complete. Let's go back to the PO, open the PO, and go to purchase order history. You see that? There is a goods movement for 100, which is the inbound receipt, and then there is a goods movement outbound called return delivery for 50. So 50 has gone out of stock. How does it go out of stock? Well, we have created a movement here. That, but the next time the vendor comes in with his truck and all, he'll take the 50 kilo bag, put it in his truck and take it back. As simple as that. So it's a pure inventory movement from our perspective. Right? There is no shipment involved, there is no packing, nothing, nothing of that sort. There is another way to do these things which involves all the logistics, but let's not discuss that here. This is a simple inventory movement. We receive the goods, we send the goods out. There is no shipping, there is no packing, there is no labeling, any of that stuff. And then we have two invoices. One is an invoice receipt where we receive an invoice for a quantity of 100, the original invoice. And then we have a credit memo for a quantity of 50. Right? Sorry. Let's go to the delivery schedule tab and observe this field called the open quantity. What does it say? It says 50. What does it mean? <clears throat> the original PO was for 100. We needed 100 pounds or kilos of coffee. We have originally received 100 pounds of coffee. Right? But we have sent out 50. So we only received a net of 50 pounds of coffee. And what does this mean? This means that we are yet to receive 50 kilos of coffee. Right? And that's called as an open quantity. An open quantity basically says we are yet to receive 50 kilos of coffee. How does the system know that? Very simple. 100 minus 50 is 50, right? So whatever was expected is the PO quantity. And whatever we got is the GR quantity. And whatever is remaining, of course, is open quantity. So in the next chapter, we're going to discuss a little bit about this open quantity and how to close it, how to block it, how to mark the delivery as complete and all that kind of stuff.